everybody and welcome to race number three of the NRX's Meyer Cup as we continue our Michigan campaign today in the beautiful Detroit Belle Isle as we race on the temporary street course here today for race number three and our first and only XL heat of the cup. So yeah, for a lot of drivers this is do or die now because this is sort of the halfway point. So for many of these drivers, they need to make an impression today if they want to even have a chance at winning the cup. So last week, we started with the Sapphire Heat Race. This week, we are starting with the Emerald Heat Race. So let's go ahead and get into the starting lineup, which funnily enough, the front row is the, is the exact same front row we saw at Berlin in the last Heat Race in the Emerald side. So yep, the Emerald Heat front row at Berlin is the same as we got as we see today in Belle Isle. So starting on the pole, it's actually swapped this time around. We got John Hernandez, and then alongside him is the number 99 of Derek McDougal. Up and then alongside them, we got the 14 of Miguel Terra and Blake Jefferson, who is the current points leader right now. After winning the Emerald Heat last weekend and finishing second in the final event, he is the new points leader as we speak. Moving on, we got Eli Carson 70, Jordan Vance the 4, both drivers hoping to make the, make the main event today as they did not make it last week. And we got Dalton Fletcher and TR Sane. Fletcher really needing some points right now. I think he's the farthest back in the Emerald Heat. And then we got rounding up the top 10, Noah Carson 92 and Leon Shifter in the 62. Joey Maddox hoping to continue his streak of making the final events as he made the final event last week. And Alex Byron hoping to make his first final event. Maxwell Fye hoping to make it in after having a really promising run last weekend after, until being involved in a late wreck. And then we have last week's winner at Berlin, Wade Brosetti, number 26, starting a little bit far about, a little farther back. So he's got a little bit of challenge this week. And we got Olivia Hammond in the 81, Jonas Scruton in the 45. And then we got John, or not, Jake Andrews in the 43. I almost said John Andrews, but it's Jake Andrews. And then lastly, Noah Busick in the 22. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get these cars started up for the first heat race this week. Drivers, start your engines. As the cars roll off today, let's go ahead and of course take a look at the three biggest drivers that are coming out of this heat. Of course, first things first, obviously. Blake Jefferson, the current points leader right now, number nine car. Dominated the Emerald Heat race last weekend and finishing second in the final event to Wade Brosene. Right now, this is he's definitely has a hot streak going, and I hope that I think many people hope that he's gonna keep that hot streak going because right now he's probably got the biggest chance of winning the cup right now. Uh, Bryce Egan currently second in cup points right now in the uh, Sapphire Heat race, but that's gonna be coming up next. And then we got the biggest driver. In the field being uh, Wade Brosani, 26, who won at Berlin last week. Hoping to keep the streak going as well. But since he's starting a little bit farther back, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So, yeah, but he's really going to have to maneuver his way through the back. Because for a lot of these drivers, like I mentioned, it's do or die for many of these drivers. They want, they're hoping to have a good run today if they want to even have a crumb of a chance of finishing it good in the points. And then lastly, another driver... Worth talking about, of course, is the two drivers on the front row, Jean Hernandez and Nick McDougall. Starting on the front row at Berlin as well, McDougall having a really good run last week. Uh, didn't make the final event after a crash with Maxwell Fai, but uh, Hernandez did make the final event after a late pass. I think finishing right on the tail end of the cutoff, but yep. So in case you missed last weekend's event, which if you haven't, you can easily go watch it. The winner of the heat race will receive 50 bonus points as well. So for a lot of these drivers, they're hoping to get a good run going because they can easily get some good points to help them in the battle. And then lastly, depending on what side of the row you're beginning on the inside or the outside is depending on your fastest lap. Here they come. They're coming through tw turns 12 and 13. This is an XL Heat race, so the top 10 advances to the final event with the winner scoring 50 bonus points. Pace car goes in as they're heading down the front straightaway. Here we go. As NRX Meyer Cup race number three is officially underway, green flag is out at Belle Isle. And look at that. They're already getting some pack racing. A little bit of contact in the back. And something's wrong with McDougal. He just was way slow in the corner. 
He loses a lot of positions. As the 91 of Jean Hernandez charges down the straightaway. Miguel Terran, the 14, falls behind and Blake Jefferson falls behind him as well. Fortunately enough, it looks like the 99 is still inside the cutoff zone. So, I think falling all the way back to 6th. Which something just went horribly wrong. I don't know what happened, but... Yep, some other drivers that definitely need some points right now. Dalton Fletcher, the 33, after wrecking out at Michigan and then wrecking out at Berlin. Really far back in the points right now. So I think something like this today will definitely help him. And this is a really short heat race, by the way. Only eight laps. So all of these laps count is right now John Hernandez with a dominant car charges out to the front. Has a, about four or five car length lead ahead already of Miguel Terra. Blake Jefferson, current points leader in third. Eli Cars in fourth. Had a really good run at Michigan in race one. Hoping to keep it going. Don Fletcher currently running in fifth. Derek McDougall sixth. TR Stain 7th, Alex Byron 8th, Jordan Vance 9th, and Noah Cars is currently on the cutoff in 10th. On the outside looking at him, we got Leon Schefter, Jonah Scruton, John Andrews, Wade Brosane, last week's winner, and Joey Maddox, Olivia Hammond, Maxwell Fye, and Noah Busick are on the outside looking in. Right now, John Hernandez just really continues to gain right now. That at and 91 car had a really good run last week at Berlin, and he's keeping it going as he is just charging through the field right now, through the S's. Well, Blake Jefferson almost looked like he smacked the wall for a second, but it looks like he just kind of brushed it, so close call right there. Oh, it looks like Jordan Vance is trying to, trying to see if he can make a pass on Noah Cars with 92. As Leon Shifter right now, the 62 car is... That, that's a battle for the cutoff right there. But for many of the drivers farther up the field... They really don't need to worry about much because... They're already in a safe spot, so they're just sort of playing it safe right now. Just cruising around the corners. But for drivers farther back... Like Jordan Vance, Noah Cars, and Leon Shifter, they they need to start making moves late. So, as already the next lap is going to be halfway through this event. Meanwhile, John Hernandez just wants to get a comfortable enough uh, cushion, so in case he makes a slip up, he won't lose too much ground. Right now, the 91 just cruising around right now. Last lap was a minute, six seconds. That time, it was a minute, five. <laughs> He's already got a two-second lead ahead of Miguel Terra in the 14. All three of the top three drivers right now are going to be making repeat runs in the final event if it continues as all three of them made it into the Berlin race. But for majority of the drivers behind, they're going to be making their first final event start. Eli Cars, Dalton Fletcher, Derek McDougal, TR Sane, Noah Cars, Alex Byron, and Jordan Devance will all be making their first final event appearance if they can continue the run. Looks like Noah Cars actually made a pass on uh, Alex Byron as he is now running an eighth. Looks like everyone just stay in single file for the time. Oh, whoa! Joe Scruton actually looks like smack the, smack the tire barrier. But for many of these drivers, this might be detrimental. Right now, Wade Brosene, last week's winner of Berlin. Looking on the inside, currently outside, run the risk of getting eliminated. Joey Maddox was also made the final event last week. Is also on the outside. Then some other big drivers that really need some point runs right now, like Olivia Hammond in the 81. Finishing way back in the pack at Michigan. Didn't really do too good at Berlin. Running 16th. Maxwell Fai, after having a pretty solid first half of the run of the Emerald Heat race last weekend, after, until wrecking out, is currently back in 17th. And Noah Busick, after having a pretty solid run in the Emerald Heat race last week, is in dead last at the moment. 
as Jean Hernandez continues to gain right now. That time around, he is 2.44 seconds ahead of the 14 Atera. But I think for these for the guys in the upper half of the of the cutoff zone or inside the making the event, they're gonna be playing it safe. They're sort of just not really worrying about making risks right now. Because they've already pretty much guaranteed themselves a spot. But for drivers farther back. They didn't make moves. Looks like Jordan Vance actually made another pass on Noah Cars. As Cars is on the 10th spot now. And it looks like Leon Shifter almost looked like he was going to make a pass for that 10th spot. Meanwhile, Jonas Scrutton looks on the inside for the, for the 11th position. There he goes. 45 on the inside. Now Scrutton is now on the cutoff line. If he could just catch up to the number 92, he might have a chance. Started on the pole at Michigan, led the first lap at Michigan. But after that, he kind of fell off a little bit, so he's hoping to make a name for himself once again here. But if he could just catch up to the 92, but the laps are closed down, next time by is two laps to go, so they gotta make something happen. And here we go, two laps to go for the 91 of Jean Hernandez. Now over two and a half seconds ahead of Miguel Terra. Then another two and a half seconds between Terra and points leader Blake Jefferson. Everyone's playing it safe back here as everyone's sort of spread out now, but. The pressure's on for Vance and Cars right now as they're the two drivers on the inside, but. The 45 is slowly catching up. As we're approaching the white flag, this time by Hernandez leads with over two and a half seconds ahead. Can the 92 hold off the 45? That's the 91. John Hernandez kind of fell back early at Berlin, but he's, he's hold off the field right now. Gonna be going to be most likely making his second final event and scoring 50 bonus points. If he can just keep the car going. And not make any slip-ups, and it looks like he's going to be okay. And here he comes. Out of turn number 13, Jean Hernandez in the number 91 AT&T car is going to win the Emerald Heat race at Belle Isle and score 50 bonus points. Along with him, Miguel Terra has made the event. Blake Jefferson, Eli Cars, Derek McDougall, Don Fletcher... T.R. Sane, Alex Byron, Jordan Vance, and Noah Cars are going to be the 10 drivers making the final event at Belle Isle. But yeah, major upset for some of these drivers that really need these points. But for many, they definitely had a little bit of a setback. Wade Brosene, one of those drivers, won at Berlin last week, has been eliminated. Joey Maddox, another driver that made the final event last week, has also been eliminated. But, yep, that's going to be it for the Emerald Heat Race. And John Hernandez will be starting on the front row, either on the pole or on the outside of row one, depending on how fast the winner of the Sapphire Heat Race was. So, yep, with that being said, let's go ahead and see how it goes. We'll be right back for the Sapphire Heat Race. And here
here we are for the Sapphire Heat Race. As we're going to be seeing, the other 10 drivers will be advancing to the final event at Belle Isle. So starting on the pole this time around is Ethan Boyden in number 88 and the 44 of Anakin Skywalker. Both drivers last week made the final event. And we got some drivers that didn't make the final event last week hoping to make their first event. Roberto Crown Jr. in the one after having a scary crash at Berlin during his heat race. And then we got Avery Alford in the number 52. Bieber Ruiz in number 39 and the number three of Joshua Harrison. Christian Vargas in the number 10 and David Dawn in the number five. Lyle Toledo in the 31 and Bryce Egan in the number 25 car who has, I believe, the most points in the form of the, in the Sapphire Heat. So, now, Luke Breitskopf, who won the Sapphire Heat race at Berlin last week, and Patrick Miller, who really needs some help right now as he is currently running out of time for having any big chance of finishing it good in the Cup Series, in this Cup race. Nathan Stapleton, the 55, Ian Perez in the number 77, then we got uh, Christopher Shakoy in the number 12, Christopher Gomez, the 15, won at Michigan, but did not make the Berlin race last week. And then rounding up the field is Logan Kuehl in number 69, and Tate Hughes in the 78. Here we go. Driver, start your engines. They already said that, but whatever. So yeah, like I already mentioned, there are some big drivers that are noteworthy right now. Of course, the first being... Luke Breitschkoff in the number 8 car, who won the heat race last week at Berlin after a dominant run. Is hoping to continue that run this week. Then right next to Patrick Miller, who had a pretty promising hope heading into Berlin. But uh, was on the outside lane. The outside lane really did not do that good. Last week at Berlin, ended up falling back significantly. But hopefully this week, he will turn things around and have a little bit more of a chance to hopefully finish up pretty high up. At this point, he's probably not going to be finishing first in the cup, but at the very least, he will hope to have a good run today. And then lastly, Bryce Egan, the number 25 right now, second in points behind Blake Jefferson. Had a really solid run, actually managed to race his way in to the final event last week at Berlin after a hard-fought battle with some of the other drivers that were battling for that last spot. Currently second in points. Hoping to make the final event today to hopefully continue the run of hopefully giving uh, Blake Jefferson a little bit of a fighting chance in the points. But as we saw in the, uh, the first, in the first heat, Usually that outside inside so the outside lane actually might prevail at first But that inside lane is definitely one you want to look at so keep an eye out for either Boyd or Skywalker Take it off. It's kind of a 50 50 chance because McDougal kind of just out of nowhere just slowed down After they head into the final turns A couple of drivers smacking the wall a little bit, but here they come Around for the second heat race of the day and the Sapphire heat race at Belle Isle. Top 10 advances. The winner of the heat race scores 50 bonus points. Green flag is out. We're underway at Avery Alford. Already look at the inside. Whoa, he's the point of the wall. As his day comes to a tragic end early. That's going to bring out the first caution, but everyone else is racing them back. As Alford has ran off with the lead. Wow! I, I really don't have words. Oh my gosh. As Alford runs off with the lead. Man, that sucks. Up, oh, Christian Vargas and Lyle Toledo past B.B. Ruiz. Meanwhile, Anakin Skywalker has fallen back significantly.
as Alford in the 52 is going to lead him back to the caution flag. Fortunately enough, cautions are only one lap at this track, so we're going to be back and have plenty of time to continue. But wow. Alford knew it was do or die and kind of pushed it a little bit too hard, putting the 88 into the wall. And it looks like the 88's day is going to be coming to an end after starting on the front row. So, man, what in the world just happened? Let's actually go ahead and uh, look back and see what happens that brought out the first caution of today on the, right in the first turn on lap number one. All right, so let's actually go ahead and sort of break down what happened on the green flag right here. So, as you can see here, um, for a lot of these drivers, like I mentioned, it's do or die for them. So they have to take risks. And we got to see that right at the beginning with Avery Alford and Roberto Crown Jr. trying to squeeze by the 44 and the 88 because they made the previous final event. So they're going to be trying to add a little bit of pressure to them. Sort of get those extra bonus points, which they desperately need right now. So as you can see here, they already squeezed in for four wide. And then, yep, so as they go ahead and start taking off now. Um, it might be debatable if that's going to be a penalty or not, because, uh, it depends on if the 52 actually passed the 88, because if he did, he's going to get disqualified. But as you can see, he pretty much puts the 50, the 52 puts the 88, sort of pushes him up the track and then right into the path of the number one. So, yep, yeah, by the time the one tried to get off him, it was too late. Um, sort of, one car sort of braked, and then Ethan Boyd, trying to save the car as best he can, came in way too hot in the corner, and then smashed into the tire barriers, unfortunately ending his day right in the first turn. Alright, so even though that was a pretty crappy way to start the race, let's go ahead and get right back to the restart to continue the heat race. The Sapphire Heat Race at Belle Isle for NRX race number three. I tried desperately to try to recover that, but I can't. I don't think I stopped. Nope, it didn't stop. Whatever. As we're about ready to get back underway here at Belle Isle for the second half of the Sapphire Heat Race, Avery Alford, after a controversial start to this race, is currently leading Roberto Crown Jr. second, Christian Vargas third, Lyle Toledo fourth, Bieber Ruiz fifth, Anakin Skywalker sixth, Harrison seventh, Dawn 8th, Stapleton 9th, and Chagoy in 10th. And then on the outside looking in, Breitskopf, Egan, Perez, Gomez, Hughes, Miller, and Cool are looking on the outside looking in. As Avery Alford is going to be leading him back around for the second half. We'll see how this turns out here. It's green flags out and already Roberto Crown Jr. looking on the outside. But the 52 has a great run coming out of 1 and 2. As it looks like he's just going to be running away with that win. Unless the number 1 can catch up to him. But meanwhile, we got a big battle. In oh, Breitkopf in the wall! Breitkopf and Gomez both smack the outside tire barrier. As they lose a little bit of ground, but they keep moving. I believe right now, yep, the 88, I believe, is out of the race, unfortunately. As Alford in the 52 car. Rockets are on the track here. Ah, it looks like Bryce Egan might actually be uh, back in the top 10 again. So we'll have to see how that turned out. But Bryce Egan right now, second in points, really needs to hopefully make this make this final event if he wants to have any chance at beating out Jefferson. Especially now knowing that Jefferson is in the final event. And it looks like he is, yep, he's 11th right now. He has to pass Stapleton. But the question is, will he be able to catch him? As Alford, with now a 1.62 second lead ahead. But 
but a really solid run at Michigan. Did not make the final event last week at Berlin. And even though he's still currently being investigated by the NRX for that first lap incident, he is currently leading. We got three laps to go. Stapleton currently has a little bit more of a lead, but Egan's currently under a second behind, so he's got to make these laps count. But right now, for many of these drivers, they're hoping to make their first uh, final event appearance. Right now, I believe the only driver that made that made a recurring uh, appearance last week is Anakin Skywalker and Nathan Stapleton, the only two drivers that made the final event last week that are currently in the hunt of making the final event once again. Two to go for Avery Alford. Yep, as Stapleton has gained a little bit of a distance from Bryce Egan for that last spot. As we head to the white flag this time by, we have just received word from the NRX that Avery Alford did not pass Ethan Boyd at the finish line, at the start finish line. So Alford will not be disqualified. And his lead remains. So yep, we, got, we might have a little bit of a rivalry between Alford and Boyd in the coming races. So keep an eye out. But Alford. With about a 1.66 second lead ahead of the number one car. Continues to pull away, but let's go ahead and take a look at the battle at the back. Between Egan and Stapleton. And it looks like the 55 is pulling away. Meanwhile, Alford heading into the final turns. Down that final stretch. And coming out of turn number 13, here he comes. Avery Alford, the 52 Nautica machine, is going to win the Sapphire Heat Race at Belle Isle. And along with him, Roberto Crown Jr. in the one, Lyle Toledo, B.B. Ruiz, Anakin Skywalker, Christian Vargas, Joshua Harrison, David Dawn, Christopher Shakoy, and Nathan Stapleton will make the final event. But man, a huge heartbreak for Bryce Egan. Currently second in points, will not make the final event. And that will give Blake Jefferson a little bit of a points advantage heading into race number four. But... Aside from that, yep, Avery Alford with 50 bonus points was in a do-or-die situation heading into this race. And even though it was kind of a little bit under the nuclear decision, he makes the final event. So, yep, let's go ahead and take a look at the official results from the first two races, for the heat races, and then we will head to the final event and determine the winner of the Detroit Belle Isle race. Let's take a look at today's results. We got John Hernandez, of course, winning the event. And a lot of fast boys coming out of this heat as eight out of the ten drivers will be starting on the inside lane thanks to their faster lap.
Not to mention a lot of new faces as Jean Hernandez and Miguel Terra are the only two drivers that finished in the final event at Berlin last week. And then we take a look at the eight drivers that failed to make the event. A lot of upsets here. Wade Brosene last week's winner in Berlin, Joey Maddox, and a lot of others really needed those points today, but they're going to have to look for next week at Winston Speedway. And then we look at the Sapphire Heat results. We got the number 52 of Avery Alford scoring a big victory out here today, even if it was a little bit on the controversial side. But aside from that, only two drivers had a faster lap compared to their Emerald counterparts. Anakin Skywalker in the 44 and Joshua Harrison in the 3 will be starting on the insides of row 5 and 7. And then take a look at the rest of the results of the drivers that didn't make the event. Probably one of the biggest heartaches is Bryce Egan, second in points. Fails to make it in by one position. And then we got Ethan Boyd in the 88 after that first lap crash with Avery Alford and Roberto Crown Jr. Unfortunately being the very first driver to DNF in the NRX. But enough dilly-dallying. We got a final event to go as 20 drivers will be going head-to-head -to, -head to compete for the victory here at Detroit Bell Isle. Let's head down trackside for the beginning of the event. And this is it. The final event at Belle Isle. 20 drivers will be determining who's going to be winning the Belle Isle race. And it's going to be a major point shake up here as yep, a lot of drivers that didn't make the final event in Berlin is going to be racing today. So on the pole is going to be um, the number 91 of Hernandez is actually on the pole. But for some reason, they start on the outside lane. And alongside him is Avery Alford in the 52. Then we got Miguel Terra in the 14 and Roberto Crown Jr. in the 1. Blake Jefferson, the current points leader. And since Bryce Egan did not make the final event, he's going to keep it. And alongside him, Lyle Toledo in the 31. Eli Carr is in number 70 and Bibi Ruiz in the 39. Both did not make the final event last week in Berlin. Anakin Skywalker and Derek McDougall will start in row 5. In row 6, we got Dalton Fletcher and Christian Vargas. Row 7, Joshua Harrison and T.R. Sane. Row 8, Alex Byron and David Dawn. Row 9, Jordan Vance and Christopher Chakoy. And rounding out the 20-car field is Noah Cars and Nathan Stapleton. So, yep, here we go. This is going to be the big race that we've all been waiting for. Drivers, Drivers start your engines. And the cars roll off. For many of these drivers, this is going to be a crucial race. This will pretty much determine if they're going to still be in contention for the Meyer Cup. Or if they're just going to have to sit out for the next one. As I've already mentioned before, right now, Blake Jefferson, the number nine, who is starting in, I believe, fifth or sixth, is the current points leader. If he can continue to have a good run today, he's going to keep that points lead. But you don't have to worry about Bryce Egan as he did not make the final event, so... Right now, I just got to hold off any of the other potential drivers that made the final events in the last couple races... Which I think the biggest threat right now for him is Anakin Skywalker in the 44. As he made the final event last weekend at Berlin. But. At the moment, as we've noticed in the first heats, it's usually the outside, rain, outside lane that takes off first. So. Keep an eye out for the 52 of Alford if he takes off right away. As they head into the final couple turns down that last stretch. Twenty drivers are going to be determining the third winner of the NRX. Will we be seeing a new winner? Or will we see... Actually, no. I was going to say, are we going to see a new winner or a repeating one? Both the drivers that won the last two races didn't win, didn't make the final event, so we are going to be seeing a first-time winner today. But who's it going to be? Will it be Hernandez? Will it be Alford? Will it be Jefferson? Or will it be somebody else? 
Green flag is out. We're underway as John Hernandez out front as we already got cars spinning on the first lap. As Christian Vargas of the 10 spins around. As caution comes out. For a lot of drivers, this is some major aggression as John Hernandez charges out to the front. As TR Sand and Christian Vargas spins on the first lap. But for a lot of drivers, this is going to be some big aggression. So. As Hernandez charges through the first turns. Heading into the Auto Trader S's. But wow. Right at the green flag. We haven't even crossed the start finish line. We've already had a wreck. As Hernandez leads them back to the caution. So yeah, that's gonna bring out the first call. As, as Shakoy in the 12. Looks like something happened to him as he's got some damage on the side of his car. So yep, yeah, looks like we had another crash as well. So let's actually go ahead. As, oh, yep, yeah, there it is. Looks like another spin was in that turn right there. Yep, as the cars are coming back to the caution. Let's actually go ahead and see what happened on that first chaotic lap here at Detroit Mill Isle. All right, so here's what happens right on lap number one. As you can see here, TR Sane looking on the outside as they head to the green flag. It looks like Dalton Fletcher tried to do what uh, Avery Alford did in the Sapphire Heat race. And then did not give Vargas enough room as a 10 comes up into the number 29. And then, yeah, it looks like David Dawn kind of pushed it as well. Caused the number 10 car to spin on the first lap. So it was just a spin out that brought out the first caution right away down the front stretch. But then another crash happened, it looked like, involving for sure Shakoy in the number 12. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit more until we get to that point. It was right down that first big stretch, the second big stretch, I meant to say, right down this straightaway. So we're actually going to see what caused that. Yeah, it must have involved Stapleton one way or the other. Yep, right there, Nathan Stapleton gets into the number 12 car. See here? Oh, man, that was a that's a nasty hit into, the, into that outside wall there. Taking out David Dawn and Stapleton as well. Oh, TR Saint just narrowly avoids Shakoy spinning out in front of him. And I think Vargas must have avoided him too. Yep, threads the needle right there. Ooh, actually made a little bit of contact with uh, somebody. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, made contact with uh, number 12 car. But yep, chaotic wreck that brings out the first caution today at Belle Isle. Well, the second caution overall, but the first caution in the final events here. As number 91 storms off with the lead early. So let's head right to the restart for the Belle Isle final event. As we're about ready to get back underway here at Belle Isle, John Hernandez leads, Avery Alford second, Crown Jr. third, Terra fourth, Jefferson the points leader fifth, Eli Carr sixth, Fletcher seventh, Toledo eighth, Anakin Skywalker ninth, and BB Ruiz in tenth. As, oh, well, looks like the, the 14 kind of lost, was getting out of line for a second, must have. Had a little bit of a rough turn right there. But everyone is still in the in the race at the moment. With only the 12 car having some minor damage. I believe he's still catching up at the moment, I believe. Yep, he's still catch, trying to catch up, so... As the cars are taking the green flag, the 12 is not going to be there. As they head to the restart. Here we go, restart's underway. As everyone sort of remains single file into the first couple turns here. As that's going to lead Hernandez. A little bit of a run. But is Offer going to be able to do anything as they head into this next turn? After the main stretch. The top three breaks away from the field. Oh, Crown Jr. has a little bit of a struggles out in that turn. That's going to leave Alford and the 91. To sort of break away. 91 continues to lead them around. Yep, no caution. So everyone has raced it pretty pretty cleanly right now. Yep. 
as Hernandez leads them around. Hernandez has nearly three quarters of a second lead ahead of number 52 as they head down the main stretch. And for many of these drivers, they're just looking to get some crucial points here today, which can really come in handy later on, especially at, especially at Winston Speedway next week, which are gonna be going back to the traditional heat format. Yeah, it looks like the 12 of Shigoya has caught up with the rest of the field. But he is still all the way back in 20th. As already Hernandez gained a huge lead on that lap. The leader right now is also the fastest car on the track right now, so yep. That 91 winning the first heat race in the Emerald Heat Race. And he's looking to continue that dominance here today. Right now, Blake Jefferson, the points leader, running in sixth right now. Having a really good race right now, especially since his teammate right now is leading the race. Oh, something must have happened with uh, Vance and Toledo as... Couple of drivers in the very back have fallen back significantly. A Shikoy is currently running in 12th. Or if that was pit stops. Because we also got the question of pit stops. It really didn't even come into a factor last week in Berlin, so that's why I wasn't really, never really thought of it until now. So, might come to question if uh, pit stops are going to pay a major factor in this race as well. Head down this turn. Hernandez is going to do another lap. Let's see if any drivers are going to go in for pits. Oh, there it is. Nathan Stapleton goes in for pits. So, yep, it looks like pit stops will play a factor here in this race. But the question is, what's going to be the better strategy for pit stops? Would you be better off uh, getting the pit stops early so you can have a better chance of catching back up with the field? Or would it be better off to get a pit stop later and have fresher tires and more fuel at the end of the race? We're going to see what Hernandez does in the next lap. If he's going to go in for pits or if he's just going to hold it off for another lap. Because uh, for the sake of getting a little bit more balance, since this is, this is a little bit of a shorter race, they have a little, they have smaller fuel cells in their road course package. So, but looks like Hernandez is going to hold it on another lap. See if anyone goes in for pits this time by. Yeah, 
It looks like everyone that still hasn't taken a pit stop yet is staying out. Chagoy, after being involved in that early caution, runs 11th right now. You know, it looks like everyone is not going to be doing pit stops at the moment. Hernandez nearly has a little under two second lead ahead of the 52 at the moment. But let's see if that's going to remain the same as they head in. Yep, is the 91 going to go in for pit stops this time by? Yep, he's slowing down. Yep, but 91's going in for pits. And Alford stays out in the 52. So yep, it looks like the leader, yep, number 91's the only one right now that's currently going in for pits. Out of that whole pack. That's either going to be a detriment to the 91 or if that's going to be a going to be a big brain move. We're going to see if that we we'll see how that turns out. Ninety one getting two tires at the moment. Let's, let's see if he gets four. Yep, he's getting four tires right now. As he surrenders that lead to the number fifty two of Alford. Now the question is, when is Alford going to go in for pits? Because right now he's got a three second lead ahead of Roberto Crown Jr. But let's see where the 91 is right now. Oh, caution's out! Number 91 of Hernandez smashes into the outside wall. Something happened with him. What happened? He's on the outside of the track with severe front end damage. And that's going to play a huge factor for Alford and everyone else up at the front. Something happened to the 91 and I don't know what happens. But that's going to bring out the second caution. As Avery Alford in the 52 leads them back. But man, what a tough break for the 91. I, I really don't know what happened. So, yeah, but that's going to be a big... Gonna be a big game changer for some of these drivers up front that still needs to take pit stops. So, before we take a look at the replay, we're gonna see what happens when they come around. If they're gonna go in for pits. But at the moment, Avery Alford in the 52 leads him around. Right now, as, as we take a look at the rest of the top 10 right now, Roberto Crown Jr. is in second, Terra third, Carr is fourth. Jefferson 5th, Fletcher 6th, Inkin Skywalker 7th, Noah Carr's 8th, Beaver Ruiz 9th, and Christopher Shakoy, after being involved in that first caution, is in 10th. So let's actually go ahead and see if we're going to be seeing any uh, cards going for pits, and everyone's going in. So let's actually go ahead and see how this turns out. That looks like the number five of David Dawn stays out along with Byron and Stapleton as they already got their pit stops done. As well as McDougall. As Alford's going to win the pace off pit row, Berg Ground Jr. second. And a couple drivers did get some positions right there. Meanwhile, the 14 and the 9 are stuck in their pits. Something must be going on with them, but... And Blake Jefferson getting the short end of the stick right there, but... 
Yeah, let's see what brought out the caution with Jean Hernandez, because I am honestly baffled at what happened. So yeah, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and be uh, clear with you guys and sort of break the fourth wall here, but uh, this is something that happens with uh, the Belle Isle 2013 track, and I honestly am kind of, this is honestly kind of ridiculous, but as you can see here, if a driver is close enough to the exit of pit road, for some reason, they just go ahead and turn, they just turn way too early and thus lead the 91 um, to do that. And since this is currently under green, the 91, it, like, I don't know why it does this, but it just does. But usually, like, as we had here, you'll see right here. So he's racing, like, usually they'll be able to just, since it's under caution, it'll just slip right through that corner and then be back on track. But, and then he just, but for some reason, the 91 just smacks into that invisible wall right there, crashing at 140 miles an hour. It's stupid that they do that, that this track does that, but it's honestly kind of sucks. So basically, yeah, John Hernandez is out of the race because of a stupid uh, track bug, which honestly kind of sucks for how well he was doing. But, yep, that's what brought out the second caution, and we're going to get right back underway for the second restart of today's race. As we're about ready to get back underway here once again at Belle Isle, like I mentioned before, there's a little bit of strategy when it comes to the pit strategy here, as we got... Next time by, I believe it's going to be seven laps to go, and David Dawn in the number five car is currently leading them around after pitting early. And we got Alex Byron in second, Nathan Stapleton third, Derek McDougall fourth, Avery Alford, who led them back to the caution in fifth, Roberto Crown Jr. sixth, Vance seventh, Eli Carr's eighth, Noah Carr's in ninth, and Dalton Fletcher rounding out the top ten. And as you guys might have noticed from that last caution, John Hernandez is out of the race after a stupid track bug. But, as we're going to be coming back to, I believe, six or seven laps to go next time by. So, we're going to go ahead and see how this turns out. And David Dodd's going in for pits! As they're coming to green, that's going to leave Nathan Stapleton the leader! As they come to the green flag. And here we go, green flag's out as the 52 looks on the outside of Derek McDougall for, for second! As Stapleton charges out to the front of the field. Meanwhile, Roberto Crown Jr. makes a pass for second. Yeah, it looks like Stapleton has a little bit of front end damage, but he's keeping that car going. The thing is, the one car has fresher tires and more fuel, so will Crown Jr. actually catch up with them? Meanwhile, Derek McDougall trying to see if he can get around the 52 car for, for third, but wow. Don just gives up the lead. Was not going to have enough fuel to make it to the end, so... But right now, he's just hoping to get some points. Here we go. Six laps to go. Nathan Stapleton leads them around with a huge lead ahead of Roberto Crown Jr. But the question is, is he going to have enough fuel to make it to the end? We know for sure that Roberto Crown Jr. probably has more fuel to make it to the end of this race. But Stapleton, after finishing 10th in his heat race, barely making it in. He's now leading him around next time by with five laps to go. But the question is, is he going to be able to hold it off till then? Yep, he's going to stay out again, so I think he might be able to make it to the end. But everyone else is staying out. But we'll see what happens. Stapleton's teammate, Christopher Gomez, won the inaugural race at Michigan. So if he wins, it's going to be the first team 
Because the 15 and 55 are technically a team. To have all their drivers win. Well, this will be a crucial... This will be crucial for Stapleton. So... We'll see how this turns out. I think it's really going to come down to uh, who has the better pitch strategy. See what happens to the 55. He comes around this time by. He stays out yet again. Five laps to go for Nathan Stapleton. That was the top three is sort of breaking away right now. But it looks like everyone's just going to hopefully stay in their positions, especially for some of the drivers that really need some crucial points right now. Up, oh, Eli Cars almost looked like he was going to try making a pass for fifth. Whoa, it almost looked like the 52 hit the tire barrier right there, but nope. Up 52 is caught up with the one. Hoping to bow for second. Let's see what happens to the 55. Stays out yet again. Oh, and here comes Eli Card for fifth. Almost looked like he was going to have a, have a run right there, but yep, the four with a great run off of that last turn. Noah Carr is right on the back bumper of his younger brother. Actually, he said three laps to go. I don't know what I was talking about with five, but no, this is three laps to go. Is Stapleton going to be able to hold off, held off the rest of the field here? After starting all the way back in 20th, leading with three laps to go, next time by it's going to be two laps to go. Let's see if he's going to stay out or if he's going to go in for pits. Nope, he's staying out. Two laps to go for Nathan Stapleton. Can he hold on to the fuel for the last couple laps? See if anyone else has gone in for pits. It doesn't look like anyone has, so. Oh, oh, actually, wait. Derek McDougal actually went in for pits, looks like. Which is yet another driver that didn't go in for pits on that last, uh, that last pit session on, under caution. So, right now, I think Nathan Stapleton is the only driver that hasn't gone in for pits ever since that caution. Can he hold on to that lead, though? Or is he going to run out of fuel? Here he comes. Let's see what happens. He's staying out. White flag is out. This time by for Nathan Stapleton. The 55 car. Is he going to be able to have enough fuel to make it to the end? Right now has a little bit under a second lead ahead of Roberto Crown Jr. Yeah, it's clear that Crown is the faster car, but is, is the 55 going to hold him off for pit strategy? Yeah, but the 55 with a great run heading down the back stretch.
Here he comes around the final turn, down the final stretch. Is the 55 going to be able to have enough fuel coming to the second flag? Here he comes. Is he going to be able to make it? Yes, he will. Out of turn 13, Nathan Stapleton started 20th in this race, but he's going to finish first. He wins at Detroit Bell Isle. Unbelievable. Great pit strategy to win this race. Yep, Bruno Crown Jr. finishing second. Avery Alford third. Eli Cars finishing an impressive fourth. Jordan Vance sixth. Noah Cars in sixth place. Actually, Vance was fifth. But yep, Dalton Fletcher really needed some crucial points in today's race. Finishing seventh. Christian Vargas finishing eighth. Anakin Skywalker ninth. And BB Ruiz rounds out the top ten at Belle Isle. But at the end of the day, Stapleton... As he runs out of fuel. He actually ran out of fuel coming around. He's not going to have enough fuel to make it to the... <laughs> He's not going to be able to do a burnout because he did not... He ran out of fuel at the end. Unbelievable. But doesn't matter. He made it to the very end. He pulled it off. As everyone else passed him, but it doesn't matter. He came out supreme. So, yep, he's going to roll it into the... Yep, he's got... See if he can make it to the very end. Make it back to the... Back to the pits, but yeah. See if they're going to be able to refuel it. But, man, as he slowly goes around... 28 miles an hour now, so... But, wow. Yeah, but I think he's going to be able to make it back to his pit stall. His pit stall is the first one. <laughs> yep, unbelievable. Oh, let's see if the 55 gives him a little bit of a nudge. <laughs> He's got to give him a little bit of a bump. He's got to speed him up. That's some good sportsmanship right there. Or not. He just puts him against the wall. <laughs> but yep, doesn't matter. Yep, the crew's going to get him out. It looks like um, they're going to get some crews to get him, push him back into his pit stall. See if they can get it refueled for his burnout. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results for race number three for a wild finish here at Belle Isle. As we take a look at tonight's results here, we got Nathan Stapleton coming home with the victory. And then we actually got both the Cars brothers finishing inside the top ten with Eli Carr scoring a top five in tonight's race. Blake Jefferson, the points leader heading into this race, finishing 16th. And then John Hernandez, who started on the pole, finishing dead last after wrecking out halfway through the event. Now onto the point standings, and in a shocking twist of events, Nathan Stapleton comes out as the new points leader, leading 17 points over Blake Jefferson. Meanwhile, Bryce Egan, who came in second, ultimately would fall all the way back to 7th in points after failing to make the final event. We actually have a tie for 10th with Christian Vargas and Wade Brosene, but they would actually be going to Brosene as the dominant driver, thanks to his one victory. Not to mention, we also have a tie for 20th with David Dawn and Joey Maddox, both with 227 points. But regardless, there was a major shakeup in the points after tonight's event. Moving on to 20th through 30th, like I said, we got a tie for 20th, but we also have a tie for 24th in the form of B.B. Ruiz and Dalton Fletcher, both with 210 points. And then 26th and below are the drivers that failed to make both the Berlin final event and the Belle Isle final event with Christopher Gomez leading the drivers with only one start this season. Hopefully things will get better for them in the final two races of the cup, but if things don't turn out any better, they have the remaining 10 cups of the season. And after a well over hour's worth of racing, we have come to yet another end to a beautiful race weekend in Michigan. As you can see here, Nathan Stapleton managed to get his car refueled and he's gonna be doing a burnout for the fans here today at Belle Isle. Congratulations to the number 55 team on an amazing victory here. Fantastic pitch strategy. Good to the last drop of gas. So thank you guys so much for watching and see you all next week for race number four of the Meyer Cup at the Winston Speedway. We're going to be going dirt racing next week, so get your butt flaps. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next Monday. This is Nashawk signing off.